Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about uh, not JavaScript, but about JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is a made-up uh, word. Uh, if you search Google, you wouldn't find anything about this. Actually, you'll find something, but regarding something totally different. It's not related to the Swift language. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to bridge uh, Swift classes and use them in uh, React Native. Um, we're going to talk about why you want to do that also, and uh, hopefully it will give you a better insight of uh, how React Native works, uh, works inside. By the way, how many of you know what React Native is and... Okay, so most of you. And how many of you know what Swift is? Okay, so uh, gentle introduction. React Native is a framework from Facebook that uh, allows you to build uh, mobile uh, applications, both for iOS and for Android, using uh, the React technology and the same uh, ecosystem that you use for building web applications, basically, in a, in a nutshell. Swift is uh, the language that, one of the languages that you use for building iOS applications. It's a very new language. It was uh, released in 2014. Um, and yeah, it, now, nowadays if you, if you want to start building iOS applications, maybe you want to start with Swift. The other option is to use Objective-C, which is like a very old language from the 80s, I think. But we're going to talk about Swift today because that's like the brand new kid on the block. And because there isn't any <laughs> much documentation on uh, React Native's uh, website about Swift. A few words about me. I am Andre Pfeiffer. I work as a co-designer here at uh, Espresso. I organize uh, this uh, meetup since 2013 with uh, two of my colleagues, Cassie and Luci. Cassie is over there. And I also write uh, uh, technical articles on Medium from time to time. Now, when I started working with uh, React Native about two years ago, I thought that there are only two ways or two approaches to building mobile applications. One was to use full native code for Android and for iOS. The other was to use an, a cross-platform uh, framework like React Native or NativeScript or Flutter or whatever. But uh, during this time, uh, I, uh, I found out that there are also some gray, some shades of gray between these two black and white. One was to use to start from a native application and render only part of the views in using React Native. This is the, the approach that Airbnb took, for instance. And also I know for a fact that uh, we have another company here in Timisoara that also has this approach. And uh, it's much, much easier to actually build uh, views using React Native than, and to maintain them also, uh, also than to build and maintain them in uh, native code Android and uh, iOS or Objective-C. I'm, I'm not a mobile developer, so I couldn't take uh, this approach. So I took another approach. I started from a React Native application and only built custom native modules where I uh, needed them, where I couldn't find a proper uh, built-in module already available in React Native or built by the community. So you might wonder, like, why would you want to do that? Because there are so many uh, different uh, libraries out there. Why would you build a, a, a native one, right? And uh, the thing is that how many of you used jQuery or still use it? Okay, so most of you, I guess. Uh, it's the same thing uh, with the jQuery. So at the beginning, you don't want to write DOM API manipulations, like low-level manipulations. Use li a library like jQuery. And there are so many plugins, like you can build entire applications and websites using existing uh, jQuery plugins. But you get to a point where existing plugins doesn't suit your needs, your personal, your, I don't know, your, your use case. So what do you do then? You build a custom jQuery plugin, right? That's the, that's the way to go. So you have to learn the native uh, DOM APIs in order to, to do that, right? You have to touch the, the native side. So this is basically the same what uh, this presentation is about, touching on the, the native side in order to create some custom logic, custom modules, custom something. And uh, this was very scary at the beginning for me. I mean, uh, diving into uh, iOS development or Android development without, for, for the first time, without knowing anything was like really, really uh, scary. 
And I totally understand uh, when, <laughs> when somebody uh, feels the same, uh, or maybe it's just me, I don't know. Uh, so today we're going to do the following. We're going to, from a React application or a JavaScript code, uh, we, we want to communicate with a Swift class. Uh, now we cannot communicate directly because there is no way to do that. We have to cross multiple bridges in order to do, to do that. So starting from the Swift class, first we have to export it or to, yeah, to, to export it to Objective-C using uh, some notation uh, OBJC something. We're gonna, we're gonna talk more about that. Now we need to do that because the entire na React Native code base is written in Objective-C. As I said, Objective-C is an older language. Swift wasn't uh, available at the time where, when React Native was built, so it was written in Objective-C. This, uh, uh, this thing is not needed by React Native itself. It's just something that uh, is strictly related to iOS development. Uh, you have to do that because yeah, that's the way these two languages communicate. Then we're going to use some uh, macros that are uh, available from, from React Native, some uh, Objective-C macros, in order to export our Objective-C class to React Native. And then we can import it, this exported class, the native class, we can use it and import it in our uh, JavaScript code using this module called native uh, modules. This is like uh, really uh, the tip of the iceberg, we're gonna dive much deeper uh, soon. If you have like any questions during my presentation, just feel free to, to stop me and uh, ask, okay? So, how many of you has, have used the uh, Xcode before? Very, very few, okay. Xcode uh, is the, I think, the de facto standard of building iOS applications, and we have to, we're gonna use it uh, uh, in this presentation in order to uh, write the, the Swift code and uh, the Objective-C code. Uh, so, let me share my, uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna build an application, we have a, a very, very simple React Native application here, uh, it's, uh, by the way, do, do you see this code yeah. in the back? Yeah, okay, cool. So it's a, it's a very simple view, we have only two buttons, on and off, and what we're gonna do with uh, these two buttons, we're gonna uh, access the, the native API to turn the, the light uh, on and off on the mobile phone. This API is not available by default in uh, React Native. Uh, there are some uh, third-party libraries that provide you with uh, this uh, feature, but we're gonna build it uh, from scratch just to see how, how easy it is, okay? Cool. So let's open our project in Xcode. Uh, the way you do that is, uh, Let's go to open and uh, go to our project. My project is called Torch App. Torch is the, the name of the API to use the thingy, the flashlight. And there is an iOS folder and uh, there is this uh, something, uh, the, your application name, dot uh, Xcode Proj. So this is the project that you have to open in uh, Xcode. Okay, so what do you have to do here? Well, first of all, not this one, but uh, the other one. First, we have to build this Swift class. Now, as I said, I'm not a mobile developer. I don't know how to actually build this class, so we, we're going to Google it. So we're going to say iOS uh, Swift uh, flashlight. I did this before. How to turn flashlight on and off in Swift. Okay. Now, the first result is like uh, Swift uh, 2.0. Uh, I know for a fact that the latest version is 4. Point, uh, something, so I'm gonna search for a uh, Swift 4 answer. So look here, updated Swift 4 answer. I see there's a function and it checks to it checks something and then uh, calls something on and off. Okay, I don't know exactly what it does. And here uh, it says you can call it by providing a boolean value to the function. It's uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm going to copy this. Don't forget to upvote. To what? Yeah. To upvote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I have a count. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you can upvote. No. Thanks for yeah. the feedback. Cool. No. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm not, uh, I don't have points. Okay, so we're gonna go to Xcode and we're gonna go to File, New, and create a new file, a new Swift file. Next, I'm gonna call it Torch. And now it prompts me if, would you like to configure an Objective-C bridging header? So Xcode detects that uh, I already have Objective-C code, that's the React Native uh, code, and I want to create a Swift file. So I want to, I have uh, two different languages within the same project. So it asks me, do you, do you want me to create a bridging header, like the thing that you want to communicate between the two languages? Yeah, yeah, I can see. So this is a project generated with React Native? Yeah, this is like the, the simplest, yeah, you, you generate it with a uh, React Native in it. Okay, and then it yeah. creates the iOS folder for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's created uh, by React Native, yeah. Okay, and where is the JavaScript code? Or you cannot see it? Here you, I'm, you don't see, you see here the native project. That is, yeah, you see, uh, sorry? This is the this is the JavaScript. You see it here, oh. the main uh, the main JS bundle. So basically, it's a bundle. That's the oh. the, the logic. The views are are uh, created at, at the runtime. time. Sorry. It's more or less the same, I think. Uh, mm, not quite. With with the views, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, I don't the views, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. a different, yeah. So I'm gonna, uh, yes, I want to create this uh, bridging header. This bridging header is just a, uh, an uh, Objective-C file and I'm gonna leave this uh, empty for now. But we're gonna get back to it in a second. So I have this class here, this torch.swift. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if you see it here. And uh, here I'm gonna create a class. I'm gonna say torch, not torch, torch. And I'm gonna paste whatever uh, Stack Overflow told me, okay? Uh, and now I, I should receive a, a compiling error. Yeah, because it says that uh, unused the uh, unresolved identifier. It's this AV capture, I have to import it. You can Google this if uh, AV foundation something. Okay, I, I'm, I don't know what it does exactly, but uh, it should fix my, uh, my compiling error. Uh, so we're going to refactor this uh, this code just uh, just one uh, uh, just a tiny bit because I don't like this API. I don't like to call this function this method uh, with a uh, boolean value. So I'll create two functions on on and off that uh, is going to call internally uh, this uh, this method here, like uh, to toggle the torch on and off. So on calls calls the toggle torch with true and another function off. This is a nicer API. Toggle torch with false. Okay. So this is our Swift class. Now we have to export it to Objective C, right? Uh, we do this using this uh, at objc, which is a directive. A directive. Okay. And uh, we have to provide a name uh, that will be available in. Um, in Objective C, which is the same the same name as uh, as my Swift class, and right now it tells me only classes that inherit from NS object can be declared. Blah blah blah. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna inherit from NS object. Can you make that private? Yeah, I can make it private. I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, we can make it private, of course. Uh, Cool. Okay, what now? Okay, so starting with the uh, Swift uh, version something, I don't know exactly, I think version 4, you also have to uh, to export explicitly each method that you want to be available in Objective-C. So we need to provide another OBJC on each method of our API, which, is, which are these two methods here. And this is not something that should be... Okay, go away. Okay. So this is our first step, right? Our first bridge. Now we, we should have our class available in Objective-C. And we have to export it to, uh, to React Native using this macro that I told you about. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna create a new file. 
this time an objective C file. I'm gonna give it the same name, torch, empty file. Okay, yes, I want it to be created there. And in this, I mean, Objective-C syntax is like really crazy for me. Uh, you can find the, the documentation uh, about, about what I'm going to write here on the React Native's uh, website. I'll show you in a second. React uh, Native, uh, we're gonna go to their website and there is the docs. And in the docs here on the left side, there is guides iOS native modules. And all the way to the bottom, like everything here is Objective-C, all the way to the bottom is uh, Swift. Like only this, exporting Swift is like one page. Like really, really brief uh, documentation. Uh, so this is what we're gonna do, like we're gonna import something and then use an interface to extern module something. Which is, we have to import something from React. React slash RCT bridge module dot H. RCT stands for React. Everything uh, that is available, uh, everything that is related to React Native uh, has this uh, prefix, the RCT, which is from React. I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna create an interface. And here we have to provide this uh, RCT extern module, which is the a macro that does something uh, behind the scene. We don't care what, what it does exactly. It does, it makes things happen, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we have to provide the, the name of our class from a, uh, yes, Kasi? Yeah, but import, so the React package you're importing from is already in the project because you're, you're, you've generated it with React Native, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's exactly. something that they give us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you have it, uh, you have it there. And this is uh, uh, something from this uh, header, this, uh, this thing here, this Although macro. This this macro, yeah, yeah, that's why I need to import it, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to use it. Okay. Torch, and the second argument is the, uh, the type that we defined here. Torch, the name that we gave when we exported our uh, class, and this is the type. So I have to put the same thing here. Cannot infer that. Uh, so now we have exported our class, but our class is empty. Like, we don't have any methods exported uh, yet. So if our class is empty, we cannot use it in a React Native. It wouldn't appear, it wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to import it. So we have to also export the, some methods or something on that class. And we're gonna use this uh, RCT extern method and pass the method, the names of the methods that we have in our class. Like basically we have to have access to this on and off methods from, uh, from our JavaScript code. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah? okay. Kasi, yeah? So, I, I it, see that uh, you're it, um, not convinced. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, surprised that you need to explicitly declare the methods. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently, you, yeah, you have to, you have to do that. I, I mean, here we just make them available to Objective C, right? Here, from Objective C, we make them available yeah. to our JavaScript code in React Native. And uh, the other method, extern method of. And let's just uh, try to compile our project here, because it's gonna take a while. So right now we are up to this point. So we can basically import this native module that we created, we can import it in our, uh, in our React, uh, <laughs> React application, right? In our JavaScript code. And let's go ahead and do that. So as I said, we need to import from React Native, we need to import this thing called native there are very many native stuff, native modules. And uh, here, uh, let, let's just, uh, oh, oh no. here we can destructure, this module and use, this is the name that we provided, uh, that we provided uh, here, right? This is the same name. Unlock Andre's iPhone, continue. Unlock it. So this class we can use in our JavaScript code, and we can call those two methods. Like let's call torch. Dot on. 
and torch dot uh, off. So if I reload, well, what? Yeah. So basically, I'm. I'm calling this method from JavaScript, and yeah, it goes all the way back to, to, to the native uh, to the native side. Ten minute break, and then we come back. It's too intense. It's too intense? Yeah. Okay, okay. So let, let's move forward. Okay. <laughs> okay. So so far we have only uh, implemented like one way communication between JavaScript to the to to native, right? Let's implement the other the other way around, like. Uh, call JavaScript code from Swift. Uh, we cannot do that, of, again, directly. But what you can do is uh, implement an event emitter on the native side that triggers some events that we can listen to from JavaScript and react accordingly when something happens on the native side. Make sense? It's like a pop sub kind of thing, okay? Cool. So, in order to do that, we need, let's start again from the Swift class. So we need to implement the so-called event emitter. It's also available in uh, React Native. Uh, but uh, because the event emitter, the, what I'm gonna use is a protocol, it's written in Objective-C and we need to use it from Swift, then we need to define it here in this bridging header that I, that we created, uh, that Xcode created uh, for me uh, uh, at the beginning. So we're gonna say import, and also from uh, React with capital R, RCT event emitter dot h, which is a header. And then in my Swift class, I will have I will uh, not use NS object anymore. I will not inherit from NS object. I will inherit from RCT event emitter. This is a Protocol. It's like an interface in uh, in Java, but uh, you can uh, implement. Uh, yeah, I think in Java also you can implement multiple interfaces, right? Uh, okay, and because of this, uh, it's a protocol, so I uh, it will give me some compile or I don't know. I think at runtime it's gonna give me some errors, but I'm gonna implement it now. There is a method called supported uh, supported. Why don't I have the... The what? No, I don't need it, actually. Okay, let's... Let's try to compile it. Uh, the thing is that the compiler is like really slow because I have a lot of stuff going on here. And that's why... Ah, okay, now I have it. Supported events, this uh, first thing here. So I'm going to override this method, and I have to return an array of strings, like an array of strings, an array of the of the events that I uh, can uh, that I can trigger from this uh, class. So I was going to return an array of strings. Let's say the event is uh, on change. Whenever I change, whenever somebody changes this uh, torch, I'm going to also trigger an event that something changed. It's not like a real use case because I know what button I'm, buttons I'm pushing. I just want to make a proof of concept just for demo purposes. So I'm going to trigger also an event when somebody uh, clicks on that on and off. Make sense? You're going to see in a minute. Okay, so I defined here that uh, this class or this event emitter can, uh, can return this kind of events. And let's see here, after, this, uh, after the torch mode is uh, turned on and off, I, I will use another method, send event, and this is what I like about about Swift. It's like it reads like plain English. Like, uh, okay, I got it. Yeah, it tells me the same thing because now it's compiled. You must uh, override the supported events method of storage. Cool. Thank you. Where did that? Okay. So as I said, uh, Swift uh, like reads. You can read it like plain English, like send event with the name. What name? Well, the name is uh, on change. And the body is an optional any, so you can send anything or nothing if you want uh, with the event, like a, yeah, like a body, like a payload. 
and we're going to send this uh, on parameter here that is a boolean on and off of uh, true or false sorry <laughs> so this is the implementation of the event emitter for the swift uh, class now we have to do one small change in our uh, in our objective c uh, bridge we have to import here also the uh, event emitter rct event emitter dot h and we have to change this uh, this type here because we change the type of our class it's rct event emitter so we have to do that as well here in objective c rct event emitter we want to let it compile and until it compiles because it's going to take a while we have to get back here in our javascript code so for uh, listening to events to native events uh, we have to import another module, another uh, module from uh, React Native, which is, uh, where is it, Native Event Emitter, this one here. And we have to create a new instance of it. Uh, let's say torch event uh, equals a new event emitter, native event emitter. And we have to pass it a class that implements the event emitter which is our torch class, this one here. This module implements an event emitter, so we can create a new one from it. Cool. And uh, now, what can we do with it? Well, let's say that uh, on our constructor, let's not forget to call super before doing anything else, we can listen to events. So we have this torch events, and we have a method here, add listener, and we can listen to specific events, like the event that we are listening to is called onChange and uh, we're gonna receive a result, like a result and what we're gonna do with that result? Well, we can say uh, this dot set state. we're gonna set an internal state on our component and do something uh, with it, we're gonna see in a minute so let's say that we have, uh, we'll create this uh, torch state and we're gonna pass the result to it and let's uh, oh, sorry let's also create this state here state equals this parameter torch and I'm gonna set it default to false uh, default to false make sense until now and whenever this result changes or this uh, the state changes let's change the background of our uh, component so let's compute a new color of the background and if uh, this uh, state if the state uh, of the torch property is true with uh, the flash the flashlight is on then we're going to set a background of uh, let's say yellow else we're going to set it to black Okay, this is just the React stuff. And let's set the background color on our component. Background color is this color that we defined previously. And this should be an object here. Cool. Okay, so before I reload my, uh, uh, my code, I just want to show you something on the device. So uh, the light turns on, I didn't refresh it with uh, this new event uh, emitter thing, but you see that uh, here I receive a warning like sending on change with no listeners registered. So it tells me that, okay, you send an event from the native side, but you don't have any listeners on the, on the JavaScript side, right? So watch out, dude, what are you doing, you know? But if I reload my application, And now the flashlight is on. I'm curious what's going to happen now. Oh, it works. So the background color. So right now, what's happening? It's uh, a round trip is happening from JavaScript all the way to the native side and back, right? When I press on, this here invokes uh, invokes uh, uh, the Swift method here, 
Okay, turn on. This will call toggle torch with on. It's gonna tur turn it on, and then it's gonna send an event that okay, this changed with the, the on with the, with the true. I'm gonna send true here on the body, and this basically will get captured here by this event listener. It will update the state of the component using set state. I'm gonna change the state, and it's gonna trigger a re-render of my component, and it's gonna switch basically the background. Make sense? So this is how you basically communicate both ways between JavaScript and uh, native code, being Objective C or uh, yeah or uh, or Swift doesn't matter. Yeah, well. Regarding Android, I can show you uh, an example of uh, Android and uh, Kotlin, or uh, Java and Kotlin also. Uh, it's the same. I didn't. Uh, I I used uh, the Swift example because Swift is, I think, the more difficult of all of all the mobile ones you know, to integrate it with uh, React Native. Uh, that's because, as I said, this is. This is all the documentation. This is like this page here is all the documentation that you have regarding Swift. That's why I spend a lot of time, uh, really a lot of time, um, to write. Okay, so I have these two articles here: Swift and React Native. The first part is uh, regarding modules, what I what I presented uh, tonight, but I have other stuff here like how to expose a method with a callback, with a promise, uh, how to expose a static uh, Swift data, so it's much more comprehensive than uh, what I presented uh, tonight. And also uh, uh, the second part is about UI components. Now, UI components is a bit trickier, it's much trickier than just exporting uh, modules or APIs, but I got this uh, covered here as well. Um, so yeah, that's why I chose uh, Swift because it's not covered by by documentation. The the Android documentation uh, uh, regarding Java is like really uh, yeah, it's available and it's pretty easy to, to pick up. Uh, but just for uh, if you are curious, um, so there is there is a lot of stuff that you have to to import and. Uh, is like the constructor, and uh, it looks for the camera. So basically, more or less the same with the same logic as uh, no, thank you, uh, as uh, as for iOS. Here you override. This is a required. This is required for React Native. So you have to provide the name for your class, and these are the two methods, right? This is how you this this the this at uh, React method is like the same thing as uh, this thing here. Basically, does the same thing, and I call it toggle torch. The implementation of toggle torch is pretty much the same. So yeah, it's it's more or less the same the same stuff that you have to do. It's it's the same. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, of course, you need to provide the same API basically if you want to. Yeah, no. I was just wanting to. The ah, that's the same. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, and the uh, the interesting thing about uh, Java and Kotlin is that the interoperability between them is like really flawless. Not. Yeah, like you you can have a, a Kotlin uh, class and can call it just out of the box from uh, Java and uh, vice versa. So it's like really, really, really great. Yeah, actually, that, that's because of the GPU. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's nice. In Swift, you have to, Swift and IO, uh, in uh, Objective-C, you have to have these uh, bridging headers and to export it like from one language to another. But yeah, with Java and Kotlin, it's like really flawless. Uh, sorry, the, the in Swift? In iOS, okay. Uh, here is just like uh, we just uh, import the the headers, the Objective C header that we want to um, be able to call from uh, from Swift. Yeah. Also. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The other way around, you have to do this, as far as yeah, I know. Okay. You do this. Am I, am I right? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, as far as I, uh, I saw today, this bridging header also is used by, um, uh, by Swift to communicate with uh, C++, for instance. You use this, the, same, the same header. Because you are able to communicate from Objective-C and from Swift, with the C++ as well, and also most of most of the React Native code base is actually in uh, in C++. Written. Cool. So if not, then uh, my main takeaway is basically don't rely only, only, only on existing libraries. Like build your own when you have the chance, because you're also gonna learn a lot of stuff about what's happening with the existing libraries as well, so you can basically create your own, do your own, do it yourself. Uh, you don't feel the urge, or, or not the urge, the pressure, or the you don't feel locked like you have to wait for somebody else to write a library the, for your needs. Like you have the freedom to build whatever you want. It's really easy. Thank you. <laughs>